While Toulouse Lautrec and Alphonse Mucha form a very important core of this auction, they are by no means the only artists represented. In fact, a large part of the rest of the sale is comprised of other excellent, rare, beautiful, sexy, and important works of art. There's too many to go over all of them with you now, but a few of my favorites are the following. Lot 30 by Ferdinand Lunel, Societe de Gas Acetylene, is just the most charming and buoyant and winsome poster. Okay, I know you think I like it for purient reasons, and I'd lie if I didn't tell you that I thought this poster was sexy, but if you actually take a step back and look at it, it's a self-referential poster of the era that depicts a beautiful poster poster meaning this woman is climbing a ladder with a poster in her hand, a bucket of glue, and a brush, and she's about to hang a poster on the wall above the street lamp. It's a fantastic image, it's a fun image. Yes, it is a sexy image, but it really captures the essence of how popular posters were in turn of the century Paris. Lot 37 by the famous and ubiquitous Fermin Buisset is another one of those lots in the auction that I just find contagiously attractive. What better way to advertise a beverage distributor than to show all of the company's products splayed across an elegantly laid table with a beautiful white tablecloth and a mischievous little girl reaching up. Fermin Buisset is known for his posters depicting children. He often used his own children as models and here we can imagine ourselves in the mind of this mischievous little girl. Probably she was supposed to be in bed while her parents were gonna entertain some colleagues or perhaps have a large dinner party. And she sneaks out of her bedroom without one shoe and she goes down to see what her parents are doing. And there on the table in front of all their bottles of booze for the upcoming party is a small glass of brandied cherries just out of her reach. But if she stands on her tiptoes and she reaches for it, she can just get her hands on one. But oops, she spilled the sticky red liquid all over her parents' nice tablecloth. It's the kind of image that's sure to strike an endearing tone in the hearts of any parent who's ever had their child wreck their home. Lot 86 is one of the most fascinating lots in the sale for several reasons. Not only is it in the style of Toulouse-Lautrec, uh, Lobel was one of the nabby artists and was clearly emulating the work of the master, but it's also for Pierre Four, one of the great poster dealers of turn of the century Paris. So again, we have a self-referential poster designed in the inimitable style of Lautrec by the great artist Lobel. It is very rare in the world of posters, which are by definition multiples, to say that there is only one known copy or only one other known copy. But in the case of this poster, it is so extraordinarily rare that for all of our research, we could only uncover one other known copy in one institution within the world. The maquette for this poster, painted by Lobel, exists in the Wine Spectator collection here in New York, but the poster itself is as excruciatingly rare as an image can be. That said, the condition is far from ideal. It's fascinating for me as a poster specialist to figure out how will the market react to such an extremely rare and extremely important poster in such poor condition. Again, in the realm of rare and fabulous, we come to lots 88 and 89, two wonderful posters by Maurice Biais. An excellent artist in and of his own right, these two posters are both exceptionally rare. Lot 88 from circa 1900 is a poster advertising the ballet at the Folie Bergère. And if you look at these dancers backstage before the show starts, peering through a knot hole in the pine boards in the wings, looking to see who is in the audience, Anyone looking at this poster, anybody who's ever imagined dating a showgirl or dating a ballerina can sit there and say, she's looking through that hole at me. And that immediacy helps give this poster so much of its charm, so much of its meaning, and so much of its impact. Lot 89 is a charming 
rare and wonderful poster for La Maison Moderne. This store, which was a symbol of all that the Art Nouveau movement stood for, is in turn represented by this very rare poster that shows the kind of wonderful material that was for sale in the store. We see the furniture, we see the objet d'art, we see the ceramics. What we don't see is the face of the woman who is looking at these wonderful goods, but we do see how intently she has thrown herself into her shopping. This is the kind of poster we're so proud to have in our auctions because it is so rare, because it sums up so succinctly in its graphic nature the concept of the Art Nouveau era and the Art Nouveau style. It is a collector's poster, it is a museum poster, and it's the kind of poster that we can truly say is rare and important. The auction also contains fantastic examples of Art Nouveau masterworks from Austria, from Italy, and in addition, there's a fine collection of really superb examples of Belgian Art Nouveau designed by Privat Livemont. Some of his finest images for Helm, Cacao, for Absinthe Robet, for Bitter Oriental. Many people consider Privat Livemont to be the Belgian alter ego of Alphonse Mucha. His style is very similar, and yet if you look at his works, you'll see that they are punctuated by white outlines to his designs and even brighter colors than Mucha used. Turn of the century Paris has been immortalized in movies. It was captured in posters, and we are lucky to have those important posters here. Come revisit Paris of the 1890s with us. Take a look at these great graphic works. They exist not only as important posters, but as fantastic and irreplaceable historical documents. If you can't make it down to Swan, as always, the entire illustrated catalog is viewable on our website. And I would encourage you to take the time, go through the catalog, read the catalog, and see what stories these posters have to tell.